Hey there, I'm Sophina and welcome to my channel. So today we are talking about the seven principles of leave no trace, which all campers, hikers, really anybody going out into the outdoors should know and should be aware of. So let's get into it. When visiting the outdoors, whether it be camping or hiking or even just visiting a park or a beach, following the seven leave no trace principles allows us to preserve the natural beauty and also minimize our impact on the land and the animals that live there. If you have any other etiquettes for camping and hiking, please let us know down in the comments because some people might just not be aware and it's important to share that knowledge. Number one is plan ahead and prepare. Being prepared isn't only important for your safety, but also for your ability to minimize your impact. For instance, a poorly prepared group may have intended to cook all of their meals over an open fire, but upon arrival at their destination, they find that there's a fire ban, which is most of the summer here in California. These groups usually still make campfires, breaking the law and impacting the land, simply because they didn't plan for any alternatives. So when you're planning your backpacking or your hiking trip, make sure you're considering things like weather, terrain, the rules and regulations of the area, um, and the ability of your group. For more information on how to plan your first backpacking or hiking trip, you can watch this video next. Number two is travel and camp on durable surfaces. So while traveling through the outdoors, the goal is to do so while avoiding damage to the land and the waterways. Staying on designated trails allows us to concentrate the travel on one designated route rather than many poorly chosen paths that trample through vegetation. So stay on the trail as much as possible and don't take shortcuts. When camping or relieving yourselves outdoors, it's important that you are at least 200 feet away from any water so that you don't contaminate it and also you're giving the animals room to go down and drink. For more information on how and why you need to treat your water while you're camping, you can watch this video next. Number three is dispose of waste properly. And here we're talking about your human waste, your water waste, and your trash. So depending on where you're going, you'll either need to pack out your human waste or you can bury it in a cat hole. So just check the rules and regulations before you go. If you're going to bury your human waste, you need to be at least 200 feet from any water and the cat hole needs to be six to eight inches deep and two to four inches wide. Once you're done, you'll fill the cat hole back up with the dirt and then kind of disguise it with natural material. You also wanna pick a place that people aren't going to frequently go. And if you're staying in a place for more than one night, um, you wanna scatter your cat holes around and not just have them all in one place. If you're using toilet paper, you wanna use it sparingly and you wanna use only the plain white unscented camping toilet paper because this is going to decompose really well, but you may also need to pack it out in some places. When you urinate, animals are attracted to the salts in your urine and they'll dig up soil and plants to get to those salts. So you want to try and urinate on harder surfaces like rocks and gravel to minimize the effects. So when washing yourself or your dishes, you wanna be also 200 feet away from water. When you're rinsing your dishes and you're, you have that dirty water, you wanna make sure that you're broadcasting the water out so that the smell is kind of diluted. And if you have bears in the area, you also wanna make sure you're eating and you know washing your dishes probably around 200 feet away from your campsite so that if bears do come and are attracted by the smells that you aren't nearby. This is another reason why if you have any leftover food, you need to put it with your trash and pack it out because if animals start to eat leftover food from humans, they start to associate humans with food and that can lead to a fatal interaction. So just read Night of the Grizzlies for a very grim example of that. Number four is leave what you find. And so we all go out into nature to experience and enjoy the beauty. So leave it the way that you find it. For instance, you may think picking a few flowers isn't going to impact anything, but if every visitor picked a few flowers, then it would. And other things like carving your name into trees, carving it into rocks, um, 
hammering nails into trees to hang things up, those are all really big no-nos. So if it's going to change anything or damage anything, just don't do it. Some places also have cultural significance and artifacts can be found there. Uh, for instance, in my upcoming video from Guam, we found some ancient pottery that we looked at, we examined, and we left where we found it. That said, some places do allow you to pick berries or pick pine cones, but there are usually limits on how many you can pick. So this kind of goes back to the first principle um, of planning and understanding the rules and regulations before you go. Number five is minimize campfire impacts. So many places don't even allow campfires outside of developed campgrounds because of the risk for wildfire. Um, and beyond wildfire, harsh growing conditions like alpine lakes and deserts mean that the regeneration of the wood source isn't able to keep up with the demand for firewood. Additionally, animals, fungi, and insects all rely on this downed wood so when you take it for campfires, you're kind of taking it from them. So this is why camp stoves have become an essential piece of equipment for minimum impact camping. And if you want to see which stove is the most efficient, you can check out this head-to-head -head gear test next. If you are in a place with abundant wood and campfires are allowed there, there are a few points to consider. So you want to use only wood that is on the ground and don't cut branches from trees, even if they are dead. Use small pieces of wood, no larger than your wrist, as the larger pieces of wood are more likely to house plants, animals, insects, and fungi. Don't bring firewood from other places as they can house plants, animals, insects, and fungi that are not native to the area and can cause disease and competition with native life. And then lastly, once you are done with the fire, make sure you're extinguishing the fire with water and not dirt to prevent wildfires. Number six is respect the wildlife. So good campers are going to be campers that observe wildlife from afar. They give them a wide berth when they're passing. Um, they secure their food and keep their garbage and food scraps away from the animals. So just like if you were visiting your friend's house, you're going to respect them and respect their home. So that's what we're going to do here. You don't want to get close to animals because that's going to stress them out and they're more likely to attack. I know you might want that really awesome selfie, but it's not going to be worth a trip to the hospital. Trust me. If you encounter an animal on the trail, first of all, get off the trail and you want to get off at least 100 feet. You want to give them a really wide berth so that they can pass. And I've seen so many stories where people are like, oh, there was an animal, it was following us on the trail, or it was chasing us on the trail. And it's like, uh, the animal is probably just using the trail, right? If you think about it, would you rather hike on a nice clear trail or struggle through the bush? You'd rather hike on the clear trail, right? Yeah. So the animals are probably just using the trail. So you want to give them a wide berth so that they can pass and you won't have any bad encounters. Number seven is be considerate of other visitors. So many of us are going outdoors to experience the solitude, the beauty and the sounds of nature and excessive noise, uncontrolled pets and damage to the surroundings really take away from that. So think about how your actions are going to affect how others are experiencing the outdoors. For instance, my dog is still in training and when we encounter uncontrolled dogs that are off leash on the trail, it is so stressful. And I talk more about that here in this video. Um, another instance is when people like to listen to music while they're hiking. That's totally fine, right? But don't have it on the back of your pack blasting so that everybody can hear it before they even see you. You know, have it close to you so that it's loud enough that only you and maybe the person you're hiking with can hear it. Also, when you get to the place that you're gonna camp, pick a campsite that is a good distance away from the next campsite, right? We're all out there for solitude and to be in nature. If we wanted to camp on top of each other, we would just camp in a campground. And then some hiking etiquette. So hikers that are going downhill are supposed to yield to hikers going uphill. And then there's specific rules about when you encounter horses and bicyclists. So 
bicyclists need to yield to hikers, and then both hikers and bicyclists yield to horses. Horses can spook pretty easily, so you also want to try to be quiet and not spook the horses as they pass you. Following these seven principles of Leave No Trace will allow us to protect and preserve the natural beauty so that we can continue to enjoy it. That's it for this video. There are links in the description if you are interested in learning more about the seven principles or watching the videos that I mentioned. Um, like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. And until next time, I'll see you on the trail. Bye.